Hi, good morning, welcome back to Mike Makes It. We've been on the lathe, we've done a little bit of work um, with alley tubes I had for scrap. Main reason being, I've got two different diameters aerial mast and I've got to join them together somehow. This is where these little adapters come in. I did those off shot, I didn't bother uh, video recording those. What I am gonna do now though, uh, another adapter, that's to get the cable out of the tube because the plan is active USB cable is going to run down the centre of the tube, uh, pop out the side, go off to the uh, Raspberry Pi. Made an adapter to go on top of the mast, another adapter, for the antenna to fit into. This is only a 60 centimetre antenna. I've got a 1.2 metre ready to go in. There's an O-ring groove and an O-ring already cut in there. The idea is that'll slide in there pop down uh, it won't go all the way through there's a there's a lip in this aluminium tube uh, but to keep the water aid so that's the that's the plan I'm going to put a bevel on the top there just so the water can run off um, to prevent it trying to get down the hole there but it should be fine and this will fit in top of the narrower tube and we just bring that over now that'll fit in like that it's a tight fit I'm not going to push it all the way in now but it should give a fairly smooth look to the tube. It's simply a tube up in the air, cable running down the middle, all, all hidden. So yeah, we're over to the lathe, put a slot into that for the, for the cable, and away we go. Right, that's all set up. I've got a five mil uh, mill end in there. Simple slot all the way down to this collar. It's fairly deep. It's probably about 15 mil I've got to go into this uh, tube. It is quite thick, but should be straightforward, so here we go. That seems to be going okay. Didn't break the end mill. If we go around and have a quick look. There you go. Slots cutting in quite well there. So I'm going to carry on with that. I'll show you the end results because I can imagine this is going to get quite boring because I'll probably be here half an hour or so. It's only a five mil end bit, so I don't want to go too deep in one go. Otherwise, I'm going to snap it off. So, uh, And I haven't got the luxury of any uh, automatic feed here. It's all manual. So, uh, yeah, I'll bring it back when I've done it. All right, there you go, we finished that. Didn't take as long as I thought. Slots cut in that adapter plate or adapter tube. This is a cable, the active USB cable. And the whole idea of cutting the slot is it can actually go down the tubes and exit here, the join of the two, two tubes. Um, and it's going to allow me to have the cable running all the way down the tubes instead of on the outside of a tie wrap. So uh, it should look a smoother, uh, smoother assembly, so to speak. So that's what we'll do is take that out of there now, give it a bit of a clean up, there's a few sharp edges, and get in the garden and put it all together. Up in the garden, not raining, which is good. This is a pole I've got to have a little tinker with. You see the satellite dish mounted on there, so we'll get that off. Chuck a couple of pipes in with the adapters down the bottom, run the cable through. And there's the addition that's going to go on the top. I not quite worked out how high it's going to be. But I reckon it's going to be about 40 feet. So, uh, yeah, I'll get on it and show you the finished item. Right, that's all put back together. You can just sit on the end there. That's a 1.2 metre antenna. Uh, sitting on top of about 35 foot mast. So, uh, no cables at all. It's all running down inside. I'll take you down to where that joint is, show you what I was on about with the mill. Yeah, that's that block of alley I was doing on the mill. You can see the cable coming out of it. So it's not being pinched at all, but it means it could come out the tube without having to dig a hole in the floor and have the cable coming out there. So fairly, fairly good idea, I think, there. So, right, I'm going to run that for two days, and I'll come back with the results at the end of the video. 
Right, here we go. Uh, the results are in on two day test before and a two day test after uh, the upgrades. Upgrades being, I've swapped out the 10 meter coaxial cable to a 10 meter active USB cable, swapped out the RTLSDR.com USB dongle for the flight aware dongle. Now, I felt this was better on the previous test, this seemed to work a lot better. You can see it's an empty case. That's because the electronics is all inside the antenna tubes now, uh, which has now been extended to 40 feet. I feel it gives a lot better sort of look, cables inside, moisture shouldn't get in there to the cable or the joints or the electronics. So I, I think that's a general upgrade. Um, I'll put on the screen uh, the, the results that I've got. Um, overall, it's 23% um, increase in everything. Um, aircraft seen are up by 11.88%. Maximum distance of aircraft seen were up by 6%. I would like that to have been a bit more, but only 10 foot addition to the antenna tube. Perhaps that's all I was going to get. Uh, positions reported was up by 41%, and the hits reported 34%. So doing these simple upgrades to what I already had, the main feeder, has made considerable difference. Um, as I say, the results are on the screen now, so you can uh, pick the bones out of that. But yeah, well, thanks for watching. The one possible upgrade you might see and another addition to the video would be raspberry pi zero being put in place of the raspberry pi three and fours i've been using it'll be a cheaper option to create a feeder um so long as the pi could cope with it we don't have that many aircrafts coming over so the data that's going to be uploaded wouldn't be that terrific so um i would imagine that the pi zero would cope but uh, there may be a video coming out soon for that but anyhow i hope you've enjoyed what i've done so far if you have thumbs up it'd be great uh, thanks for watching Mike Makes It.